Leveling systems have been used in Minecraft for quite some time. You can find them in various add-ons, mod packs, quest books for example make good use of them and add excellent RPG progression elements to your game. Let's find out how to make them. But first, here's a demonstration of how they might work. You can see that as I break stone, I'm actually adding up my count, gaining points, and as soon as I reach the limit of 64, I'll progress in one level. There we are. So now I'm level 1. Let's see what happens when I reach level 2. Alright, here we go. We can see that the total necessary count has increased to 256, as did my level up to level 2. And level 3 is similar. Here we go. Level 3. The new count total that I need is 768 to level up. With this system, I can basically level up an infinite amount of times, and it gets progressively harder each time. Alright, so what do we need? My leveling system uses 22 command blocks. 12 of those are needed, 10 are optional. But 4 of the optional command blocks have necessary objectives. Let's start there. Our first objective is named Level. LV, capital LV. And I went ahead and just named it Level with a little bit of a special twist on the name. Our second objective is called Count. Our third objective is total. And our last objective that we need is called points. Be sure to add each of these to your game. I am calling our leveling area a module. You can see it behind me. It's the diorite on the ground. Basically, in order for a player to level up, they have to be standing on that diorite, and only one player can level up at a time. So it may be necessary to create more than one module if you wish. So here's our first chain of command blocks that we need. In particular, test for diorite tag. We start with an execute command that tests for a player within a specific range, and as long as they have diorite below them, and there's not another player with a diorite tag, then that player gains a tag called diorite. This is going to be a repeating command block, unconditional, always active, and it activates every 20 ticks or one second. Right above it in line is command block number two. It's just a chain, always active, zero delay in ticks. And it's an execute command as well that detects a player within a range of 10 blocks. And unless they are on diorite, it removes their diorite tag. This allows our system to run fairly and only if the player has the tag diorite. So we go to our second command block chain titled set first two totals. For the first command block, it's going to be a repeat, unconditional, always active, with a 20 tick delay, or one second. It's an execute command as well that tests for a player within a specific range, and as long as their objective, which is level, matches zero, then basically we're going to set their total, which is another objective, to 64. The number 64 could be changed to whatever you prefer, but for me, I chose it because it equals a stack of cobblestone. For the second chain block, it's going to be a chain, unconditional, always active, with a zero delay in ticks. It's an execute command as well. It tests for a player within range as long as they have the tag diorite, and if their score for level objective matches 1, so in other words if they're level 1, then we're going to set their total to 128 which is essentially double the first. This number could be anything as well, as long as it is bigger than level zeros. So as a demonstration, let's say that we mine a couple blocks and our count is now at three. What this will do is if I reset my score, which is right here, it'll set to zero, we'll see a delay, and then it sets it back at 64, representing my level zero. Same would be true for level one. That's pretty tricky, right? Alright, let's see what happens next. So now we take a look at our leveling mechanism. How do we actually level up and progress? Well, you're looking at it. You'll need eight command blocks. The first two are going to be an always repeating, and the last ones are just chains and conditionals. 
It's not necessary, but you can also surround the base of your platform with deny blocks to prevent any of the diorite from being broken. So for the first block in the chain, it's going to be a repeating block, unconditional, always active, with a 30 tick delay. This is so that the bar don't flash off and on repeatedly, and it looks like it's static. Its command is probably the most tedious and difficult that you'll see within the progress. It's basically an execute command that detects a player within a certain range and runs a title raw command on the action bar. This command will be listed in the description, as will all the other commands. But let me describe how it works. So raw text allows us to depict what's actually in the title raw command. The selector will always be at self because we're looking for a particular player and we want it to be activated as them so that only their score displays. Anytime you see brackets with a text, it means that we're just going to type out something. In this case, we're adding a new line for level. Anytime you see score or the name at self objective level, we're saying that we want to display what our score is for that particular objective. It's followed by another text for count and then another score for the objective count for ourselves. You can add as many objectives as you like, or as many lines as you like. Bear in mind though that the more that you have, the more cluttered your screen will look. Command block number two in the chain is going to be repeat, unconditional, always active, with a zero tick delay. It's an execute command. It's saying that if the block three blocks above is air, then we're gonna run a set block command, which replaces it with stone. This is how we continuously get stone right above our bedrock. Of course, you can replace this with any block that you want. Number three in the chain is going to be a chain block. It is conditional, always active with a zero tick delay. It's an execute command that detects for a player within a particular range, as long as they have the tag die right, and as long as they have the item cobblestone. This is important because if your stone breaks, then you should get cobblestone. If you replace it with any other block, let's say shroom lights, then the item you're looking for will be Minecraft shroom light. At any rate, it runs a command for clear. As long as you have diorite within range, it's going to remove that cobblestone from your inventory. Command block number four is going to be a chain conditional, always active with a zero tick delay. Basically, it adds for all players within range, as long as they add the diorite tag, a number one to their count. So now we're starting to see how we can level up through counting. Bear in mind that this activates only if cobblestone is removed from the inventory for the previous command block. The reason being is because it's a conditional. Command block number five is going to be a chain, conditional, always active with a zero tick delay as well. It's a scoreboard command that adds to the players all within range as long as they have diorite tag one point. The points here are just for show, but if you chose to, you can have an NPC shop or anything that will trade the points out or to add additional effects to your world. Command block six is going to be a chain, always active, conditional, with a zero tick delay. It's an execute command that detects the player that has the diorite tag within range. And as long as their score of count equals their score of total, what it'll do is it'll add one to their level. In other words, they'll level up as long as count and total are the same. In my case, the first level was 64 and 64. Command block number seven is a chain conditional, always active with a zero tick delay. It's an execute command as well that searches for the player with the diorite tag. And as long as their objective count is the same as their total, they're going to run a, run a scoreboard command that sets their count to zero. What this is doing is essentially resetting their progress so that it'll end up with 65 out of 128 for level one. Instead, it would be zero, resetting at the start. Command block number eight and the final in the train this command is slightly tricky. It's an execute command that searches for the player with the diorite tag. And as long as their level objective is zero or higher, that's what the two dots mean, then basically it runs a scoreboard operation command. 
what this is saying is it's saying that it's going to take their total and they're going to be multiplying it by its level. This is how we can get the dynamic progress and constantly receive a higher total rather than just always being 64. These last commands are optional, but I find them pretty helpful. What if we want to reset our scores for testing? Well, you'll need four command blocks. The first is just an impulse. Unconditional needs redstone with a zero tick delay. Basically, it says scoreboard players set at player level zero. So the nearest player gets their level reset. Everything after that is similar. They are chain blocks, unconditional, always active with zero tick delays. Here we're setting the count to zero. For the third one, we're setting the total to zero. For the fourth one, we're setting points to zero. Now we don't want to flood our chat with our commands, so in this case what we can do for testing in particular is we can have a command block that's an impulse, needs redstone, zero tick delay. Game rule command block output set to false, so we won't see anything in chat. However, in case we want to see them for troubleshooting, it's the opposite. Game rule command block output true. This has been a pretty enjoyable project to work on, and it was pretty cool figuring out a good level progression system. I hope you've enjoyed it too. If you have, leave me a like, leave me a comment, let me know if you have any questions, concerns, or perhaps another tutorial that you'd like to see. At any rate, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.